Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays for another episode of Factorio Flavors, the series where we take one of the more complicated processes in Factorio and then we each have a go at making our own version of it to see which one works the best and which one is the most interesting. So today we're going to have a look at the Covarex enrichment process and this is the one that takes the uranium-238 and turns it in a slightly complicated way into uranium-235. We'll start off with Mike's build here. And as you can see over here on the left, we've got a stream of uranium ore coming in. So this is that's that's what this stuff is, the uranium ore. That's passed into a centrifuge. And the centrifuge will then process it. It'll take 10 of the ore and turn it, probably turn it into uranium-238. However, there is a 0.7% chance it'll actually make a uranium-235. So uranium-238 is the dull, heavier one. And that's useful for making things like depleted uranium ammunition. And it's also used partly in the construction of uranium fuel cells as well. But the, the exciting one, the one that gives it all its power, is the uranium-235. And this is the one that has all of the energy in it. And so it's exciting and, and good for nuclear bombs and nuclear fuel and nuclear fuel cells. and provides the actual oomph behind them. And so you generally find in Factorio, unless you're doing enormous amounts of combat with, um, nuclear, with, with uranium ammunition, you're going to need a lot more of the 235 than you're going to need of the 238, or at least you're going to need them in vaguely similar amounts. And so the way they're produced by this recipe is not remotely suitable, because you're getting more than 100 times as much of the 238, the dull uranium, as you are of the spicy one. So, the, um, the way we get round that is we have this, this process at the system over here called the Covarex Enrichment Process. And this, if I open up the, the uh, thing here, or if we have a look at this diagram, you can see that this takes in a huge quantity, specifically 40 of the uranium-235, and 5 of the 238. Then uh, during a minute of crafting and spinning it in the centrifuge, it produces 41 uranium-235 and 2 uranium-238. So one way of looking at it is it turns 3 uranium-238 into 1 uranium-235, which is a very worthwhile exchange, as, um, as, as I sort of implied by the, uh, from looking at the previous recipe. But it requires a, um, a catalyst to do so, and that catalyst is 40 uranium-235 and an additional 2 uranium-238. So they get taken in, used uh, use as a catalyst, then passed out the other side. So that leads to this process you can see going on here, where each time one of these machines runs, it pours out a huge amount of the uranium-235, which then has to be, and then also takes in a huge amount of uranium-235 on the other side. So it's passing it all round and then, and then feeding it back into the centrifuge, as you can see here. So, let's take a closer look at Mike's designs, and uh, since this is the simplest one, I decided this would be a good one to start with. So down here, we've got the, um, each of these centrifuges is being fed with the, uh, with the uranium-238 on the top belt and the uranium-235 on the bottom belt. We've got the first two running already, as you can see here. This one has built up an internal supply of 81 uranium-235 and 12 uranium-238. So it's got enough, it's buffered enough inside it to run two more times after this one finishes. Uh, and once it, do, once it does eventually finish, as it nearly has done now, it will unload all of the, um, all of the extra stuff that it doesn't need, that it came out, out of the recipe onto these belts. We immediately split out the uranium-235 onto the top belt and the 238 onto the bottom belt, like that, as you can see here. This gets passed round, and the 235 gets passed along and gets picked up again by these two centrifuges, as you can see happening here. And this, this ensures these ones will stay with enough in them that they can carry they can continue to run. And then any spare will be passed on, they will ignore it, or they'll pick it up if they into, until they get up to the 80, 80 they need. And eventually enough will dribble past for the third one to kick in. And this is what I refer to as the Covarex weight, or at least the second part of it. The first part is waiting for a 40, 40 of the uh, 235 to actually come out of these machines over here from wh when they're processing the ore. And once you've got 40 of them, there's another one coming through there, that will be enough for you to get your first machine running. Then once you've got your first machine running, if you've got a setup like this, you then have to wait for it to build up to, a, to another 80 in it plus the 40 that it's using. So you need to wait for it to run 80 times after it's already got its first 40. And then it will start passing additional ones on to the next machine in the line. And this then continues, you run the first machine and then the second machine and these two work together to produce the, the next 120 to get this one happy and then to produce 40 for this one and then to get that one up to 120 and so on all the way down the line and eventually all of your machines will be running and you'll have a steady stream of the 238 going in and a steady stream of 235 coming out. Down at the bottom here, you can see when when the um, as the uranium types of uranium come out down here, they come along here and then they go through these um, the filtering system down here. We've got these splitters which both have prior which are both prioritised to take the input from the feedback loop first, and then if there's any additional space, then they'll take it from the other loop, um, and then they feed out on the other side. They've got a priority output for going back into the system here. 
so what that means essentially is that any any um, uranium that comes around here from the feedback will get be used first and then topped up by anything that comes around here and on the other side we'll all we'll always fill these belts up first before and then any overflow will be allowed to pass out down this way and go off into the rest of the factory where we can turn it into ammunition or atomic bombs or nuclear fuel or whatever we need and so the uh, the system runs quite nicely as you, as you can see we've, we've now got this one up to um, it's got 50 56 its internal buffer but there's a bit more to be passed around so we'll see where that gets to in a moment Okay, so that, that one's now up to 76, so it's nearly full, and it's let, thir and 37 has managed to leak through into the next machine. So as you can see, we're gradually building this up. So I'm going to speed it up, and then we'll, we'll come back in a moment and, and see how it's getting on. Right, and now we've allowed a bit more time to run. So as you can see, we've got a few more of these machines have um, have, ma have managed to start working. We've, we've got, uh, so all of all these ones along here now have got their 80, and they're about 15 or so. Which is, this one seems to be a bit low, but that's because it's just started running again. So now this one will start reloading as it, as it comes around to it. Um, and the excess gets passed along, passed along down here. And we've, so we've now got uh, seven machines running. And it's, it's, it, as you can see, it's a very, very gradual process, and it takes quite a long time. But each time this whole thing runs, it kicks out one additional Uranium-235, and that allows it to pass on to the next machine and get that one running as well. So let's give it a little bit more time, and we'll see if we can get the, uh, the machines, all the machines running, and then see how the system looks then. Now we have the system running in a steady state. So as you can see, the um, the outer part, outer side of this outer belt is now backed up all the way back down to here. And so that means when we get a nice flood of the uranium coming out, a little bit of it manages to overflow into the, into the belt here, and to, in order to go off with the rest of the factory. And then once, and then as that happens, then sometimes a load of it gets pulled back in and it shrinks down. But then a load more, the, but then the machines will finish again and it'll get and it will uh, run back out again. So I'm going to speed the game up so you can see you can see how it works in uh, it, it, um, at a much faster speed. So there you go. The the um, the amount of the amount of uranium on two three five on the outer part of the belt sort of waxes and wanes. But every so often you get a, a flurry. It, it pushes all the way back out to here. And then when that happens, you start to get um, to the you get to the point where the the outer outer row of the belt is completely full. And eventually some of it will overflow down here. So you get every so often you'll get a little burst of uranium two three five coming out. And then the system will sort of calm down a little bit and then uh, and, and use it use it all up. And then you get, and then again you get this, and then again it'll load, it'll catch up, and you'll get this little dribble coming out here as, as it's being uh, produced faster than it's used. And, it'll, and, and so you'll, you don't get a steady stream of it out, but you do get bursts of it every so often, allowing you to then start using it for other things. This design was produced by Tristan, as you can clearly see, and we've got exactly the same sort of input system here, where we've got a load, of, we've got a load of centrifuges that are slowly putting together some uranium two three eight, and occasionally a uranium two three five pops out as well. So this all gets passed down here. He's putting one onto each side of the belt, and this this uh, loopback system here should look very very familiar. And he's got a very very similar system going on here, but in order to make it slightly more efficient and stop you having the problem where all of the uranium has to flow all the way around every single time, we've got a system where the uranium is passed. He's using filter inserters instead. So he's got white inserters along here. So he's passing out the um, the uranium two three five, and then immediately grabbing it with a with another filter inserter next to it. Uh, so instead of all of the uranium getting passed all the way round, it just gets dumped onto a very, very short distance of belt and passed the loop straight back round into the in, into the centrifuge again. And this is much neater and much more efficient because you don't have to put all of the uranium from all of the machines all the way round the uh, the belt at the end. So this system is probably going to be producing just as effectively, but only but with a single yellow belt. So this means you could have a lot more running off the system with the um, uh, if, if you use blue belts as well. He's also not bothering to prioritise the, uh, not bothering to do uh, the, the priority splitters in the same way that Mike did. Over here, we've got the uranium, two, we've got the 235 and the 238 coming along this belt at the bottom, and then any excess is just being pa allowed to pass by and go out, the, go out in, into the rest of the factory. And this allows, this is a, makes the design a little bit simpler uh, to look at and a little bit more, um, a little bit, a little bit neater, I think. But as it is, you, you'll see the, the um, centrifuges along here are grabbing the 238 if they need it. And any excess 235 is going to be is going to be allowed to dribble past and make its way round here and down onto onto the belt along here. But if any of these machines did need it and somehow it managed to sneak past, they will they can then grab it back in again. So if we watch this come round here. You can see it's going past all these machines because they would have picked it up when it went past them earlier if they needed it. And so it'll dribble trundle all the way along here and then presumably some of these machines down the end here will actually need it because this one hasn't started running yet so this one will, this one definitely needs it but it could be that some of the earlier ones do as well let's see yeah so there we go this one is still trying to get up to its up to its uh, total of 80 in its in its pre-buffer and that's the Cover X weight I was talking about 
so so yeah along here we've got the same we've got the same sort of basic idea with with these machines gradually trying to pick trying to get themselves up to enough uranium to start working Tristan also made a slightly more complicated version of this down here um, the main dif the difference between the between this one and the other one he has a system with this counter that's watching to see how much ur um, uranium 235 had come through and allowing uh, exactly 40 to come through so he's reading the um, reading the amount of no, sorry, he's reading the number of um, pieces of uranium that's gone through here in pulse mode, and then he's got that. If we look closely at this uh, at this ar arithmetic combinator, you'll see that the wire goes directly from the input to the output, and that makes it into a counter. So it's going to count the number of the number that go through, and, he, and uh, until eventually it will then this one with the number will to the total will reach 40, and therefore this will stop allowing any more uh, bright uranium to come through. And so that passes them all down all the way down here to the end. They use with this long handled inserter, they can then be fed into the first centrifuge. And he's then got a supply of the uh, dull uranium and the, uh, coming down the, down here, um, and then exactly the same thing, passing the uh, the, the bright uranium out and back in again in these in these little loops. So this will pass it up. Each one of these will, as you, as you can see with all these machines that are finishing at the moment, will pass it round and immediately straight back into the same um, same centrifuge. And then some of it will be allowed to, to sneak past like this and will be passed up to the next centrifuge in the line and so on. So again, it's all priming itself up in the same way that all the other ones were. And eventually, all of these machines will be primed. And at that point, we'll start to have a slow dribble of the um, of the hot uranium coming out of the top here, like like that one. Oh no, that, that one came out from this processing. Um, so gradually, very, very gradually, we will start to allow the um, the uh, the uranium-235 to come out once, it's, once it is eventually, eventually finished. The next design I'm going to look at is this one of Mark's, and this one is again fairly similar to Tristan's. We've got over here we've got the uh, we've got the processing running for the um, for the uranium ore being turned into other types of uranium, and uh, Mark has decided to make it a little bit more complicated but a little bit more effective by putting productivity modules into all of the uh, centrifuges, and then also by having speed modules from the beacons running on absolutely everything else. So this 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 system is going to get you slightly more output for the input compared to absolutely everything else, uh, which is which is nice. Um, but how, how is it? How, how does it work? Well, let's, let's take a look. This is actually very, very similar. Once again, we've got the um, the inserter here that's passing out the hot uranium onto the belt, and then it's been immediately being grabbed and put into the in, back into the machine. So you've got that little loop back there, so you don't have to pass it all the way around any sort of long belts. And it's then being passed along again in exactly the same way so to, to 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 bring all to get all the machines up to start running. Similar to the other ones, he's got a belt of uranium-238 running around the outside here. And the interesting thing you'll notice here is he's, all, he's putting all of the uranium-238 onto the bottom or the inside of the belt. And that's, that's so it can be grabbed by these inserters. But then the filter inserters that are unloading the uranium-238 that's not going, that's not been used up, are putting it onto the outside of the belt. And that means there's always space for them to put it out. As it comes around, as it comes around and goes back on here, he's going to use up the stuff from the outside on, on, onto the belt first. And he's also going to make sure that it doesn't overload. But if you ever get any gaps in there, then it can be filled up, topped up from this from this belt here that's coming over from all of the centrifuges. And what's interesting is he's got a bit of a buffer over here, which is used, which is probably to allow the Covarex weight to work effectively. So all of the uranium 238 is being allowed to flow up to here, then put into these boxes as a stockpile, and then it's being put back on the system to flow through here um, with the, with the slower inserters. And that means that when once the system starts to back up a bit, he'll be putting the uh, uranium-238 out of the boxes, and that will stop some of these uh, centrifuges running. So you'll notice that these ones along here, or a lot of them, aren't able to run because they can't output, because there's no room on the belt, because these ones are unloading onto it. It means you've got a supply of uranium-238 over in the chest over here that will be topped up whenever there's any gaps in it by the centrifuges along here. So in theory, you should always have plenty of flowing through. And I guess you could tap some off here if you wanted to to get, to get some through because it's prioritised to go up this way. So I'm not sure why that belt was removed. I, I, I don't know whether that was me or him. I honestly can't remember because I've, I've mess, been, been messing around with this for a little while. So let's put that in there and allow it to flow a little bit more readily. And I think this will now just produce a little bit more um, emptying power on, on the belts over here. It's changing around, changing a little bit the way the uranium flows through, but I imagine it will probably still work. Over here we have my design. This one, is, this one again, the first part, very, very similar to all of the other ones. We're producing lots and lots of uranium-238 with occasional blobs of uranium-235 scattered through it. And this is the sort of this is the sort of ratio, and this shows it off quite nicely because I've got some fairly long belts along here. This shows the sort of ratio that the 235 is produced in, and why you have to uh, why you have the initial Covarex weight while you're desperately waiting to try and get 40 of these shiny ones together. So I cheated a little bit here. Normally you would have 
the reason these these boxes are in place is because normally you would have an inserter at the end here loading up all of the uh, the dull uranium into these boxes just to allow you to accumulate in for your 40 um, 235s in, that, in order to get the system running um, so that's 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 why those would be there and you would also normally have a system running through here now that would allow that would pass the um, the uranium 238 out again to put it down into the rest of the factory so to be honest I should probably I could I could put that back in again so we could have um, some inserters like that and there we go now we've got a nice stream of the uh, 238 being passed out down into the rest of the factory so how does this work and what's different about it well once again I've got all of the I've got the inputs being taken in off this belt down here and that's mostly going to be 238 because that's what you mostly get but the interesting thing about this system is that instead of instead of passing it onto the onto the belt and then immediately back in again I've done things slightly differently so the it's all passed out and put into this chest here and now we've got some circuit conditions, so we're watching how much uh, of each of the types of uranium is in the chest, and um, and so we're then if if when the chest gets above um, 45, then it starts to pass it out this way. And 45 is big, it's a bigger number than it really needs to be. Um, but I wanted to ab make absolutely sure that no matter how confused things got, it, you'd never, you'd never, the system would never break. When you get more than 45 in the chest, it will then dump three of them, because that's the, that's how many this inserter can grab at a time, out onto the belt here. As you can see, you get these little dribbles of three going out and then being passed down here and off into, into, into the rest of the factory. We've also got a, a, a cable going from here down to this one, and this will make sure you will only load when there's less than 10 in this chest. And the idea of that, the, the reason I've got that in, is to make sure this chest doesn't end up filling up with uranium-238, because there is a slight risk that if you just leave the system as it is, um, without the connection in across there, then this, this inserter will keep loading the uranium-238 into the centrifuge while this one's busy trying to put the 235 in, and you'll end up with too, with too much 238 in, in, the, uh, in, in the chest over here and have it overflow. So, yes, this, this system works quite nicely based on that. It, you, you, it keeps a rather large buffer in here, though, unfortunately. It means that as well as the 40 that's currently being used inside the machine and the 80 that's being held in its buffer, that's 120, you've then got another 40 in here, or 45. So that's 160 uh, uranium required for each centrifuge. So that does mean that this system is quite a lot slower to get up and running. But it, I, I quite like it because it makes it a little bit more visual as to what's going on. Although, to be honest, I'm, I'm thinking, starting to think I, I do do prefer some of the other designs around. Uh, little details to note um, is I, I, put, I deliberately put the uh, ridiculous speed modules in here that come with Creative Mod. These increase speed by 250%. And I cheated by loading all of these machines up with uranium by hand. If you just leave it to run naturally, as you can see, we've only got two of the centrifuges running here. And this has been running for quite a long time now. Um, it takes a long time to fill up all these buffers, and even more so um, because, because I've got the extra buffer out in the chest here. So all of these systems, they have they have some sort of a few things that make them not quite... Each one has, has a few disadvantages. This one is slightly worse because of the sheer amount of time it takes to get up and running, but oh well. <laughs> So after those, those were all our basically our initial designs. When we, when, when I said, hey everyone, I want, I want to do Covrex for a Factorio flavors video. Let's make these. Uh, let, let's, let's, let's all, all make up a design in, in vanilla Factorio, and we'll see what, um, we'll, see, we'll see what different ideas we come up with. After that happened, Tristan and Mark got into a bit, a little bit of a contest to see who could make the most, well, uh, ludicrously complicated system, I guess, is probably the best way to put it. So this is Tristan's third attempt at the system. Uh, and now we're going to go in and try and decipher how it works. So once again, this, this part isn't, it isn't interesting. This is doing exactly what every single other one does. It's running through. It's generating the, um, the 235 and the 238. No, no problem there. And we're splitting the ones out on one on it, one on either side of the belt along here. So how does this work? All right. So similarly to my design, He's, pick, he's got the um, the chests in between the, um, the the centrifuges in order to be somewhere where all of the um, all of the supplies are stored. And as you can see, it's passing along. It's uh, passing the the uranium two three eight is getting passed along by sort of an endless series of the um, of passes by the uh, by, by by the inserters along there. And then along here, we've got these inserters will insert whenever they get the whenever they get whenever they can. So the uranium two three eight and two three five will be loaded out of the chest into the into the into the centrifuges here. So that part is nice and simple. There's nothing funny going on with these inserters. Okay, so the complicated part is it starts off with this inserter here. This is a filter inserter, and it's having its filter set by um, by what's in the chest next to it. So you can see the green wire, the green cable going from from this inserter to the chest just to the left of it. These two are linked linked by a green cable. 
Uh, that's added then, or rather subtracted, or rather from, from it is subtracted, the, the minus 20 of each of those from here. So essentially this means that this inserter will kick in whenever there's more than 20 of something in this, in, this, in, in this chest here. And when that happens, it will pass it along. So at the moment we've got 17 bright and 9 dull in there. If, if, we, if we let that get up, when that gets up to uh, 20, 20 dull, then it'll pass some of that on down the chain. Okay, great. So this is, this is set to only output when there's less than 40 in there as, sort of, as a safety precaution. So what happens when this when one of these finishes, which this is about to, so we'll, this is when this finishes, we'll see, we'll see what happens. It passes out the um, the uranium two three five one grab at a time. It has dro dropped into there, which gets passed along by this inserter, and then this one will immediately grab it and put it back into the, into the uh, centrifuge. So it just goes round the loop, round very very quickly. It'll do that four times to pass all of the uh, two three five over, and it'll also pass out the two three eight, which will get passed across it as well. This is this is hard to explain. I see I see how it works because again we've got the same sort of system working with it passing it round here, and we've got then we've got this one watching to see when there's more than twenty in there that when it's built some up in order to pass it on to the next machine in the in the row. So it works very very similarly to a lot of the other ones. It's just a bit more complicated. And then every so often you get it some passed all the way along here, and some of it makes it out at the end. Um, I'm not sure how much more detail I can go into with this one. But essentially, the uh, the way it works is, is it gets is the uranium gets passed around by these inserters as as you're used to, and then when there's more and when there's an ex excess of it, it gets passed across. Um, it gets passed across by these inserters uh, that are watching for there to be more, being more than twenty in the um, in, in the chests. Also notably, there is this belt here which watches the um, am amount in all of the chests, and if there's more than two hundred. And if there's more than 200 uh, uranium-238 in all of these, we'll stop the belt here, just to, just to ensure, presumably that's to make sure that you don't end up with too much uranium-238 in these to throw the counting system off, I guess. Uh, it's all a little bit weird, but it does seem to, um, but it seems to be working, so um, yes, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll glaze over a little bit and then move on. The final design up here is Mark's um, overly complicated system. <laughs> and once again, what, what, what is going on here? So, um, right, and this this one has a system that allows it to uh, to prime and start running a bit more quickly. Because as you see here, this inserter is linked up to this uh, this counter here. Again, like I was talking about, right at the, very near the beginning. This is a, a, a arithmetic combinator with a loop back on it, so it's it's going to be set up to count. And that means this this system here will um, will pass in. The uranium 235s that came in on the input, which I've now cut off because for, for reasons of, of explaining how it works, until it's passed through X worth of them, which is set over here. Uh, X is X is set to 40, right? So over here we're setting X to 40, and that means over here we'll then um, pass the pass the uranium 238 in until this gets to 40, and that mean, and that's quite nice because it means that. Rather than waiting until this machine's got all the way up to 120 before the next machine starts to get any, uh, this this system ensures that you'll get uh, the first 40 will go into this one, the next 40 will go into this one, the next 40 into this one, and then they're all set. To, then they can all sort of run in parallel, building building themselves up to get to the 120, and then suddenly it'll start to output at the end. Um, and this means that the the over, overall you'll get the system up and running much more quickly uh, without any needing any manual intervention because you'll get you'll have all of your machines running in parallel rather than getting one all the way up to 120 before the next one can even start. Uh, down the bottom here is the same sort of idea with pass, just passing the um, the uranium 238 around. We've seen this sort of thing before. That we're just passing it around in a loop and making sure that we don't get too much of it into the uh, too, too much in, in, in this initial box. Nothing. Nothing particularly extra. Nothing extra to talk about there. Now the question is, what's going on with these inserters? Mark has done something very interesting with the outputs here. He set the stack size on the output inserters to 10, the stack size on this one to 10, and probably the stack size on this one to 10. And that means he's taking advantage of the um, of the fact that it drops all of the uranium instantly into this into this chest here. And that and this one is set to only work if there is if there is if there is greater or equal to 10 in the, in this chest. And this one is set to run if the if there's only one in the chest. And so that means. As the uh, as the system runs, it will take this, it, it, when this machine finishes, it will have 41 uranium 235s to get rid of. So it'll pass those out 10 at a time, and so they'll be it'll, pass, it'll swing over with 10, and this one will go aha, there's 10, so it'll grab them and put them into here. It'll do that four times, so the 40 will be passed round to allow the uh, centrifuge to run again, and then 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 the 41st one will be passed out, put into this chest, and this and this insert will go aha, there's only one in there, so it'll pass that back out. 
and that means that we don't have the massive um, stock of a stockpile of of 80 or 80 or 120 uh, uranium 235s in each one of these insert each one of these centrifuges instead we've only got 40 and that means you can start outputting it much much more quickly now one thing you do get one slight downside you'll get is you'll notice that these the centrifuges do stop working briefly between each each build of uranium of, of the of the uranium each time they run uh, so you've got you're getting slightly less through for each centrifuge but it means you don't end up building up the huge buffer you had otherwise another possibility would be to put an additional 40 in here have this load until it gets up to 80 which would which would mean you'd, you'd have 80 instead of 120 so that's a bit of an improvement but the machine would run be able to run all the time um, whether that's preferable or not is a is, is open to debate open, and I'll let you, let, you let you decide which you think you prefer but this is a very clever system that prevents you from having to build up to 120 before you can start feeding your on to the next next um, next centrifuge or start feeding onto the output so yes that's quite clever I'm impressed impressed with that it's alarmingly intricate and I suspect that we would probably never use a system like this in an, in an actual game of Factorio but as a thought experiment and something to try and as, as a way of showing off I think that's, that's quite impressive and I, and I do quite like it so I think that's that's all that's all I have for you um, we've got we've had the um, We've had the simple, the simple design over here, we've had, and then slightly more complicated ones, more, more and more complicated ones, and then the sort of the ones to make your head melt, your brain melt uh, at the end as a, as a sort of as a finisher. So I hope you found that interesting. Thank you for watching. If you do the Covrex process in a completely different way, let me know about it in the comments. Maybe send me a, uh, put in a link to a uh, to, to a, 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 a blueprint string or something like that. We'll take, I can take a look at it. Um, but for now, uh, as always, thank you for watching. Come back as, uh, soon. There'll be there'll be more videos about Factorio, more uh, more more streams, and videos about other things as well. So there's always lots and lots going on on the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.